everyone, it's Carolyn here to share another channeled message from the Light Keepers, a group of angelic beings I channel for your awakening and ascension journey support. So welcome today. I'm Carolyn. I'm a channel. I'm a distance energy healer, and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor. And I channel the Light Keepers for your awakening journey. So what I do, for those of you who are new, I offer the channel typically, and then what I do is I talk about the channel and I offer additional information, I offer my take on it, I channel additional information through this, and I also give you some of my examples as well, so you can learn from this and take it away, and then apply it to your own journey. So thank you for everybody who always joins me, and for those of you who are new, welcome. And I offer you below in the description box a gift video on how to create flow in your body for health and wellness, which are six tips on how to do that during this awakening journey, which is so important for our body. So check that out below and then that'll lead you to some more free content on a regular basis. So today's topic is five tips on how to start becoming your own guru or becoming a better version of your own guru. Because ultimately, this is our journey, and we need to claim it. And a lot of us don't do that. In fact, I think all of us, at some point or another, don't do that. And we look outside for all the answers. So I'm going to give you five tips today on how to move forward in your journey to become your own guru. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read the channel first of all, and then I'm going to talk about the five tips and also give you some of my explanations and journey as well. All right, here's the channel. Lighten your load to find everything and more of what you brought in your DNA, we implore. It is there for you to find. Just go deeper in time to the greatest of your inside. For the path you create is your own to make. No one else or another method to will ever be just for you when you look to what you know. Deep inside is the doorway to home. For there all the answers lie, even though you've never been taught this in time. But now you come into your own way, reclaiming who you truly are today and to let you grow from within to define the you, the truest there is. So it was really interesting how this topic came about. It literally just showed up the other night and I could tell that they wanted me to talk about this becoming your own guru. And I'm gonna share an actual show that I happen to be starting to watch when I was told, we want you to do a channel on this, but we want you to watch this show. So I'll give you the show's name and the detail at the end of the video so that you can um, see if you can find it to watch for yourself. Because frankly, I found it to be, um, I guess I would just say validating. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on five ways you can start becoming your own guru and steps to take. So the first thing, I have been told is that it is never a recipe all right we in this awakening journey are here to learn from others but not make them our guru or make it a recipe that you must follow step by step step knit to knit um, detail to detail because then it's not really yours and there is never one way to do something. So what I want you to understand in this is that as we go out and we learn from others, whether it's you watching my YouTube videos or you go take a class, um, uh, whatever it is, they want you to find your own way because you are your own guru. So, so this does not exclude you from you know going out and learning from others, but we, what we wanna have happen is to be able to take the things we learn that resonate with us and then toss aside the things that don't. Now here's a great example of my own journey. And I thought it was really odd at first, but it makes so much sense now today. So when my distance energy healing modality showed up in my lap, which is probably a whole nother video, I started thinking, wow, I gotta go figure out what this is. Cause if any of you know my story, I didn't know anything about this whole realm of spirituality, anything before my awakening, or my, I should say my dark night of the soul four years ago. I didn't know anything about this. So I thought that the thing that showed up for me had to have a name, had to have other steps that I needed to take and do. And so I was searching for this. What is this that's happening? What is this thing I have? What is this modality? What is this? 
what I knew was energy healing. So I looked online and I found Reiki. Well, I didn't really know what Reiki was, okay? I knew it had to do with energy. That's about as good as it got for me. So I searched out a class. I went to a weekend long class, thinking I was going to be taught step by step, and then I would come back and that's exactly what I would do. I was needing to put a label on it in my mind, okay? I went to the class and I'm pretty self-sufficient in general. And so that was, a, that was, I think, what very much helped me in this weekend long class when, where what I was learning was very interesting to me, but I realized this isn't what I do. Yes, we both use energy. This isn't what I do. My process is very different. But what I learned during those three days, I thought, you know what? I like some of these things that are done, particularly in the beginning. Um, some of the opening before you actually go into the session, some of the other pieces that I could really resonate with. I also kind of understood some of the things that I was having occur with my modality that made sense from the perspective of learning Reiki so that I could apply some understanding to what was going on with my process. But I still had my process. So I came out of those three days and I was like, my process didn't change. It's not a thing I have to label called Reiki. It's my own thing. And so this was a huge defining moment for me to realize, and it was a journey, I'll tell you, because to realize that this was my way of doing this. However, I learned valuable things from this weekend Reiki class. And so consequently, what I would say to you is as you're doing your exploring, uh, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be, you know, these kinds of things I'm talking about where you're, you know, working on energy healing, whatever it is that you're learning more about, you're wanting to understand more about that you might be interested in doing down the road, understand it's still your recipe to create, even though you might take an ingredient or two from someone else to make your own pie. <laughs> so that said, know that that you can learn from others and make it your own beautiful creation. Because what I have been told in sessions that I do for my spirit team is that there are as many healing modalities in this world as there are individuals. Because we all have this potential, right? Now I'm not talking about just going out and creating an energy healing modality. I'm talking about anything, but this is my example, right? So what they've talked about is that there are as many modalities as there are individuals because we're all the spark of the divine. We're all creators. And whatever we create with good intent can be. It doesn't matter if it's never been heard of before. So one of the first things to do is to know that you have your answers within and that you don't have to make it a recipe from someone else and you don't have to make someone else your guru. So that's number one. So number two, and I found this so important for my, for my journey, is if we are to become our own guru, we have to stop externalizing so much to define who we are or to help us understand our world or to help us understand um, our journey forward. No, it's within. Again, what happens to so many of us, and it happened to me for a good portion of my life, where I would look to what was happening in the world to define what I should focus on, what I should be concerned about, what I should worry about, uh, what I should be involved in. I was very externally focused. Now that's not necessarily a negative thing, but there is a balance. And what I started to do in my awakening, and many of you feel this as you journey forward, is focusing on less news content, less media, less bombardment of all the stuff, which is typically negative, in our face to define our emotions, to define our reactions, to define our feelings, and sometimes to define us. So, and you see that all the time. I mean, think of big, huge world events where masses of people um, are whipped up in a frenzy because somewhere else, someone else has lit a fire in them, okay? Now, you can say some of those are for good reason, but 
we also see how it can be terribly destructive because what people have done is they've allowed them to be controlled by everything external. And instead of centering within to find out their own answers, they are led by the nose by others who wish to whip them up into strong emotion, hatred, um, um, partitioning, you know, you name it. You see it all over the world today. And so stepping back from media, in particular for me, TV news was the biggie. Stepping back from that was a natural process for me. It wasn't just, oh, I'm going to do this, and then I had to fight it. It was a slow process, which I think many of you find. But anyway, that's number two for really helping you become your own guru. Because what that does is that filters out that external noise for a good part, and it allows you then to look at yourself as kind of your world, all right? Now, this is not a selfish or self-centered way of looking at things, because ultimately in this journey, what this is about is being able to center yourself as your own guru so that then you can give the goodness from what you have created from within to others. So keep that in mind as I'm talking here. This is not about shutting out the external world or not having compassion for people because this is all about that. But what we have to be able to do first is we have to recreate and reinvent ourselves into the wholeness of who we are as this unique being. And then when we have that opportunity to settle within ourselves and let the external world kind of melt away and yet still be a part of it, that's where the power lies. All right, so that was number two, less externalizing. For me, that meant less media and less world news, less news. So define that for yourself. Number three, very importantly, space for yourself. And I really could have left this to the end to just have a big bang of this is the most important one. But honestly, this is the most important one. It's the foundation of doing all these other pieces, which is not running around like a chicken with your head cut off all the time. And we do that so much. I used to live that way. Um, I did not have a moment to do, and I still struggle with this, to do kind of nothing. Now, I don't struggle with it anymore because I meditate regularly and that helps me a lot. But I still struggle with the free time and just maybe doing nothing. So that's my own battle. But anyway, needless to say, space for yourself. What does that mean for you? Now, I have always talked about meditation. I find that to be extraordinarily important in the awakening journey. And I don't think it's just for me. You can define meditation any way you want. I've already done videos on this, but you have to have space for yourself. And that means being alone. Okay. And I really mean being alone. Many of us uh, over our lifetimes have had struggles being alone, um, being comfortable in that aloneness. Um, and I don't mean being lonely. You know, you can be around a gazillion other people and still be lonely. That's not what I'm talking about here. Aloneness, solitariness, space for yourself. Um, there are many things that I do. What I do when I really want to settle in and really be able to connect in with myself, I get out in nature. That is huge for me. But the point is, is nature, nature, nature will allow you to connect in a very different way. It, it allows you to connect internally to yourself. Now, amp that up with meditation regularly. I do it morning and night. And then what happens is when you're out in nature, you kind of just settle in automatically rather than thinking 10,000 thoughts and forgetting the beauty that you're walking by and being able to connect in. So nature, connecting in with nature as you're taking those walks, as you're doing those hikes, I would challenge each of you to really start adding to the opportunity to get outdoors. And that may be as simple as getting in your garden and digging something up. I don't know, but whatever that means for you, or hugging a tree, because I do that. <laughs> so another thing, I love Epsom salt baths. Those are fantastic. It's a way for me to shut the door, chill out, and just be able to center myself. And oftentimes I will meditate then. And it's even more powerful when you're in a salt bath. I'm just going to tell you that now. So try it out if you haven't. Again, those quiet spaces of time. I love sitting in the sun just sitting in a window. You know, we have these horrific Iowa winters. Fortunately, this one's not too difficult yet. <laughs> and I'm gonna hope it's not, but sitting in the sun and just doing sun gazing is a most amazing way for me to really be able to find space for myself. Another way I find space for myself is exercising. Now, 
you can argue that by you know working out with other people or playing tennis with other people that's not time for myself oh it is because for me, with tennis, it's a mental game. So what I'm doing is I'm using a different part of myself that I never use during the course of the day. So I have that set up on a regular basis for myself. So I have a lot of pieces of my life where I have carved out space for myself. And I am still a work in progress, okay? There are a lot of things that I still need to continue to work on. But space for yourself, if, if we don't have that, in our world, how can we ever become our own guru and understand who we truly are and what we truly know and what we truly believe and what is our truth for us and how we want to move forward. So doing the things that I talked about previously, but finding that space for yourself first and foremost as the foundation to do all these other steps. All right, so that's number three, space for yourself. Number four is listening to your own voice. So, so many of us during this journey, our intuitive gifts start opening up in whatever way that means. Some of us, it's just the numbers. And I say just the numbers, but a lot of people think that's nothing. After a while, it is a lot, okay? Because that didn't happen to you beforehand, right? So know that you are seeing magical things happen in your life every single day. But one of the biggest things is, is really starting to be able to settle into yourself to hear yourself, you have a voice, a very quiet voice that speaks to you if we listen. And that goes back to number, number three, where if we have space for ourselves, you're going to start to hear that voice. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, most of us travel through this journey where when this is new to us, that voice sounds just like us. But you know what? I've always said it sounds like a more intelligent version than me. Well, that's your higher self. I have come quickly to know that, you know what? In the course of my lifetime, I've talked to myself, but I thought I was, the human was talking to me. I didn't recognize it as a higher self. I didn't even understand there was a higher self. I didn't understand any of this. So it was just, you know, I'd talk in my head to myself. Well, I think I was led appropriately in many ways because I did listen to myself, but I didn't understand it. Now I really listen to myself because I understand it is a higher self that's speaking to me. Now, what, what I have found, and I, this may be very different for you, is in getting to learn to listen to your voice, it can come very quickly and it can come softly, but it can come sounding like you, but it has a different rhythm or excuse me, it has a different tone. Um, sometimes it's two things I've found. Much more matter of fact and like deliberate and knows the answer. Like this is what it is. And also it's never going to tell you thou shalt. You must do this or that will happen. This is a punishment if you don't do that. It's not like that. That's not how that higher self will speak. And then also it is typically without emotion. Like I said, it's very deliberate, it's unemotional, but very often there's humor, kind of sarcastic humor. Some of you may find that on occasion, there's a huge piece of humor that pops in. So know that it's kind of gonna sound like you, but it's a higher intellectual version of you is what I say. But the point here is starting to be able to listen to your voice and in order to do that, these other steps kind of come into play, particularly the one f with space for yourself to be able to listen. And don't work hard at that. Just let it happen. Often that voice will be heard in moments of inspiration, in moments of decision making, and it come, can come in a flash and we can ignore it so fast. And then our human mind takes over and we choose another way. So that is a work in progress for, I think, everyone. I mean, there are times when we still have our human self pop in. So a really good cross check to whether it is your higher self speaking or what I call your human self speaking is if it's filled with huge emotion and discomfort and doesn't feel right and is, um, I guess I would say extreme or demanding, uh, that's not, that's the human self. That's not your higher self because your higher self will always come in um, in a very measured way, a very, like I said, higher intellectual version of you, um, unemotional, uh, non-demanding, um, sometimes with humor. So 
starting to be able to listen to your voice versus, again, the outside world, and again, that human voice. So that can get tricky, but it's a process. This is all a process. These things do not typically happen overnight. I've been on this journey for, well, my awakening started in 2010. I didn't know it until 2016 when I had my dark night of the soul and then everything happened. So you could argue that I've been on that journey all my life. I have. I think we all have to listen to our internal voice. However, what when it really became apparent was just four years ago. So I'm still on this journey too. We have this happen every single day. And so that's why these practices, these things that I'm talking about, becoming your own guru, are important to put together and then use in your daily practice. Now you're probably gonna find others too that you want to employ. These are just start like a starter kit for becoming your own guru. So with that, we have number five. Now we put the whole package together. This is about the mind, body, and soul all coming together. Listen to your body too. Talk to your body. I've mentioned this before. It's part of the package. We can't, you know, you. It, what, what's interesting is there, Okay, so the, the show that I watched that I'm going to reference, there was a piece of it in there that actually spoke to the, uh, the, the journey of being able to find our true self. Okay, find that enlightenment that we're all journeying toward, understanding the trueness of who we are. And there was one piece of this that talked about um, the control of the body, controlling it, um, taking it down on its knees, and which was quickly found, well, not so quickly, but found to not um, alleviate anything. Needless to say, we have a tendency to ignore our bodies and think of them as only tools rather than the consciousness that they are and the vessel that we travel in. When you pull your body into your awakening journey and you start literally talking to it, treating it with care, knowing it's a vessel you're traveling in, oh, this makes all the difference in the world. I've recently flipped this around and made a huge difference in my body's journey. I lost 22 pounds of the 30 that I've gained in the awakening. And there's so much that I've done to get to that point. And it was like a switch flipped on. But the point being is the foundation of that for me was connecting with my body, talking to my body, looking in the mirror and appreciating my body rather than whipping it like a racehorse to treat it just as a tool. And I've had videos on this before, but this is part of becoming your own guru. You can't do it without the body. You are traveling in the body and we best try to keep it as healthy as possible and work with it and care for it and love it. And it's been through a lot and many of us are going through tremendous physical and emotional struggles in the awakening and have all our lives. But know that as you give it comfort and kindness, it will start speaking back to you. And it's a vessel in which we travel and is a part of you becoming your own guru. And now, as you bring in the mind, the ego mind, the human mind, not trying to push it away and fight it. No, not doing that. It's part of this human journey. But it can be reined in to become part of your team, part of your spirit team. It has worked immensely well for me by recognizing the ego mind and being able to say, mind, I love you for what you are. I thank you for protecting me. I thank you for doing the things that you have offered me over my life, the discernment, the ability to learn, the ability to take care of myself, all those things that the mind does for us. And that ego component of it is there for a reason, but it's gotten out of control in our lives in so many ways. And we see that every single day to one degree or another. So as we bring that mind in to be part of that team, to part of the spirit team, which is mind, body, and soul, oh my gosh, does that make a difference? And we know that the ego is going to jump out at times and kind of do this thing. And you're gonna go, okay, now let's work together because guess what, higher self is in charge. And I say those things. So then what I do is I bring in the higher self in the morning and I say, okay, higher self is in charge. Are we ready to go for our day? And that is such a powerful process to do in the morning. So as we become our own guru, we have to understand the totality of who we are, mind, body, and soul. It's not one, it's all three together in this life journey. Appreciating all, not trying to banish one over the other, but knowing that your higher self will always be able to lead the way. So that is the mind, body, and soul connection. And when we start practicing these five steps, and then you can add whatever you want to, but when you start practicing these five steps on a regular basis, as how they are defined for you, how you create them for yourself, this is what helps lead to so much 
peace in your awakening journey and the creation of your own guru, the creation and understanding of who you truly are, where the answers truly come from. Because as they say, we have all the answers inside of us deep in our DNA. It's just allowing us to go within to actually be able to find that guru again. Every single one of us has this inside of us. If we could all find that peace inside of us, imagine where the world would be today. And that's where we're headed. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today on how to start becoming your own guru or to make yourself a better version of your guru. So with that today, thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I will remind you of my services, purplerainhealing.com, where you can work with me, where I channel you information through either channeled messages or distance energy healing and channeled messages or the Spiritual Awakening Mentoring, where I offer one-on-one -on -one support for you during your awakening journey, where we work on the things that you're struggling with in your awakening journey or goals you want to achieve in your journey. So with that today, I thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.